Hey everybody, it's Les Do It Wednesdays with your host, Melissa Green. Um, hey everybody, what's up? It's Melissa. How you doing? Um, today I think I'm gonna take it a little. I'm taking it a little bit serious today. Um, and I want to teach you guys a little bit about gay history. Not just gay history, but a very important word that has been very controversial and has impacted the gay community and has impacted a big part of who we are and what we do as a people. And I think has really shaped and it's pretty much is the word that we use. It's going to be hard to sum this up in a five, three minute video. But the word I'd like to talk to you guys about today, yes, is the word faggot. Yes, it might be an offensive word, but today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about the origins, origins and how it's impacted us today. Let's go. Okay, so I did my research. And I found out that um, the word faggot actually has two origins. And one I think is the most popular. Um, just the word faggot is no matter what, from either way, is it a very offensive term. Um, in, in question is, in Europe, when witches were being burned, among those sought out for burning were gay people. They were required and gathered the very bundling of sticks, the real meaning of the word faggot, which they would be burnt when the faggots, well, the sticks, were running out. Gay men were thrown on the fire to keep it going for the witches. Um, faggots, the faggot came to mean gay, to mean a gay man, to force them into the closet in fear of death. Um, and then it became a slang word. Uh, the word the word meaning a bundle of sticks it's ultimately derived in old French term the origins as a are like is offensive to homosexuals rather obscure um, they actually been used in the English you been used in the Eng, in the English since the 16th century as an abusive term for women particularly old women reference to homosexual may derive this from as a female term, often used reference to homosexuals or effeminate men. So, the application of the term to an old woman was called a faggot giver. That was applied to old widows. And, um, now, it's sometimes, it's, um, it's sometimes claimed that the modern slang meaning developed from the standard meaning of fag as a bundle of sticks to presumably with a reference to burning at the stake. This is, however, unlikely the case. There is no tradition of burning at the stake being used as a punishment for homosexuality in Britain. But, um, fagala in a uh, Yiddish word means little bird and is also claimed to be an explanation for the modern use of the word faggot. Um, simply between the two words it makes it reasonable and possible that it might at least be uh, re it must be a reinforcing effect. Um, also it is um, But, um, so, yeah, so I think that's where, um, the whole idea of effeminate men actually came around because of the word faggot. They would say, um, when they would tell someone when it was supposed to be an old woman or a woman that was not in her place, they would tell her, like, they would call her a faggot. Or a fag hagger. And I think that's where the word fag hag um, came to be around. 
Um, the British actually continued to use the term, they used the word for faggot as a noun and verbs and actions right through to the 20th century, never applying it to homosexual any time. Um, but it wasn't really when homosexuality, um, it wasn't until the first you known published use of the word faggot or fag referred to men as homosexually appeared in 1914 in the U.S. It referred to a homosexual ball where men were dressed in drag and called them faggots or sissies. Ernest, um, um, so yeah, it actually, it didn't actually become a term for gay people until the early 20th century. And it's interesting to see that's where it was used, that even in 1914 there were, um, gay people uh, dressing in drag and going out there. So you see that the history of gay people um, expands so far into the past. It does not just start in the early 1950s and 60s. There is a history that we have a history. Um, actually, it's very funny. Um, Ernest Hemingway in The Sun Always Rises includes the line, you're a hell of a good guy. I'm fonder than you than anybody on earth. I couldn't tell you that in New York it meant it mean I was a faggot. Like um so that's pretty um the current notion holds that Yish were Fagel, a little bird, might have been the source, but it lacks any other evidence to claim the word commonly used in Yish. Prior to World War II, it did Im indicate homosexual, but did not have any offensive terms. It wasn't until it meant towards women. And then, um, the origin did not, with the origin, it never came defiantly, Return to you, uh, homosexuals. It did not come until the nineteen early twentieth century. Uh, when it came to women, it meant a woman who was ill-tempered, who was um, who was a shrew, and then or shrewish, and they would call her a faggot. So this word has always been an offensive term, and I think. It's very interesting to see that how back how such a powerful word has such a strong history and that we as people need to learn that um what happens to us is um that we as a people need to learn our history and it doesn't matter who you are that there is a history to everything and that that's why I wanted to look up this word because I didn't realize how much of a history this one word had. And this was only a little bit of a brief history. I was just going all over the place. Um, so, I'm, so, I'm just going to leave you at that. And you guys can do your own research. I'll be back next week. Um, we're, I'm still going to do my internet high five. Um, so... All right, I'll see you guys all later. Internet high five. Yeah, that's right. Internet high five.